Hi guys, welcome back to 1UP Game Dev. Um, like you must have already seen in the title of this video, Nanite was absolutely amazing. I am just blown away by it, how good it is and I will show you over the next few minutes how good and powerful it is. Um, but before we get into the video itself, I would like to invite you guys to join the Discord community. Um, we are growing. Uh, we're having a lot more members in the community now. Uh, so come on, interact and hopefully help each other out in the community. Okay, let's get into the video now. For those of you who don't know uh, about Nanite itself, Nanite is a new technology developed by Epic Games for Unreal Engine. Um, it is a rendering technology which allows uh, the engine to render hyper-realistic assets uh, without compensating with the quality of uh, the asset that is uh, being used in the engine. Like up until now, game artists had to always optimize every game asset to uh, like a few thousand polygons or triangles, uh, which would like sometimes uh, cost the quality of the uh, asset itself. So what Nanite aims to do is uh, automate this optimization process themselves while keeping the uh, hyper-realism of the uh, asset intact. I don't know how they do it exactly, but uh, if you want to read more about Nanite, uh, the official Unreal Engine documentation link is in the description down below. So yeah. Um, Let's go into Unreal Engine Fire Early Access and try it out now. Another thing I need to say before I begin is that uh, Nanite does not work with all objects just yet, but it works with a good chunk of stuff. Uh, it works with at least most uh, Mega Scans assets from what I've been told, uh, barring a few, uh, but there's also a workaround for that. Uh, and I will be going through those in this tutorial as well right so let's start with importing a new asset from the quixel bridge which is now a part of the engine itself uh, let's get into collections and let's go for naughty cliffs right let's get this one okay so in bridge now you can see all these low quality medium quality high quality and then there's a option called nanite uh, you need to select that and then you hit download what this does is that it basically downloads the highest quality uh, uh, available uh, highest quality asset available in uh, bridge uh, for example i think this might be in 8k so it will download everything in 8k uh, it's kind of a downside but there is another workaround to this which i will show you in a bit as well um, so yeah, let this finish downloading uh, in Nanite and then yeah, then we'll push this into Unreal Engine. Right, uh, we're just finishing download and yeah, it's done. Uh, so now what you need to do is just click add and it will send it into your uh, Unreal project. So yeah, now if I just press control space and head into mega scans, 3D assets, uh, it should be this one. This is the one I was working on earlier. Yeah, there it is. Uh, and then if I just double click and open it, uh, you can see over here, wow, wow. See the number of triangles, about just 4 million triangles and about 2.1 million vertices. Wow, okay. So now what we're gonna do is, oh, this is not uh, Nanite enabled out of uh, Quixel. Uh, so you'll have to enable Nanite to fix this. So what we do is we close that, open the content browser again, and right click over here, Nanite and enable. Okay, it's gonna be uh, calculating and preparing the static mesh. Let's wait for that now. So it took Nanite about three to four minutes to do its stuff on uh, my system, which is like fairly old system. It's like five year old hardware. I have a 1070 Founders Edition and a 
6700k so yeah pretty good speed for like a uh, five-year-old hardware right so now let's open this asset and see the magic of nanite right so if you remember uh previously what we saw was four million triangles and 2.1 million vertices and look at it now and if you see there's not really any difference uh there's the inside so yeah that's empty uh but yeah well okay so let's save this right save that and let's bring it into our engine whoops okay this is a big asset should have seen the size when i got it oh well uh let's put it down there uh but yeah if now you go to nanite visualization and see triangles you can see like it still has all those triangles even though it just says 2000 it still does maintain everything but i, I don't know how somehow it's calculating it as, as 2000 now which is just madness all right uh so yeah so that's one way to do nanite that's through mega scans just download the nanite version but now what if you want to do like your own uh model right or if what if mega scans has like a uh asset which does not have na the nanite option so what do you have to do then is uh okay then you uh for example if you're doing it in a product here uh let's say i think a i saw the mango which did not have nanite yeah so these don't have nanite so what you do over here is basically download any of these uh low medium or high quality asset download them and then you add them into the project uh i'm gonna take a custom asset of that i downloaded off the internet yeah i'm gonna be putting like an fbx in here okay so you can build nanite over here when you're importing your asset but uh for this tutorial for example you've already imported this asset and you did not press build nanite and you suddenly realize midway through your production that oh i need nanite on this in on this particular asset how do you do it so i'm gonna just import all right now without building nanite over here give it a few seconds to import and yes uh, open the content browser let's say i want to do this one right okay first let's like save okay let's say i want this one oopsie okay uh we have this one here so right now if you see nanite visualization you can't see it because it's not a nanite product if you see in wireframe it's right there okay so now open the content browser and we open this asset and you see it's like 40,000 triangles and 29,000 vertices you go here into the details panel and type nanite and then you click build nanite it still won't do anything okay it's basically done it's doing its calculations or done its calculations in the background and then you need to enable it and click apply changes this is when it actually applies the changes and brings down the uh, triangle and vertex count see now it's done and if you go over here and then you go to wireframe you won't see that asset anymore because you're going to see it in the nanite visualization like this you you can see that nanite's doing something like if you move away it's doing something like what lod does uh but like it still maintains the integrity usually when i've seen stuff uh, uh from level of detail changes i i can visually see changes in the art asset itself but i i, I don't see any such changes with this even if i uh, go back to mega scans 3d assets 
and put this asset here, right? If I okay, uh, if I move it a bit slow, it's a bit too fast. If I move away from that asset, I I still don't see any LOD kind of changes on it. It looks exactly how it was when I was close to it. Okay, uh, so yeah, that's like the power of Nanite. You can use it with a few of your own custom assets if it's able to calculate properly, uh, but don't count on it yet, especially since it's still in early access. There might still be quite a few changes from Epic side on uh, further optimizing this tool. But as of now, in the early access, it's insane. But yeah, um, if you want to do that with the uh, Mango, for example, which does not have Nanite, you can do it the same way. Just import it into your project and then open it and then you build, nan build Nanite and enable it over here. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it for this tutorial. Um, Make sure you join the Discord community and I will see you there. But yeah, um, I might come out with a new tutorial maybe on Lumen because that's another thing from Unreal Engine 5's early access that I absolutely loved. Uh, but yeah, until then, uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.